Hello everybody, welcome back to another Woodworking Wisdom. Today we're starting off in our little crafty workshop. We are going to look at um, uh, a pen blank. So we're going to make a, a Celtic knot pen blank. Um, really nice little simple one to do. Um, we're going to use a scroll saw to make the cut and we are going to use um, a very thin veneer to kind of insert into this um, pen blank. And I'll show you what we're we're going to do in a minute. Um, also I've got one of these prepped so I had a little try at it before uh, just to make sure it worked before we shared it with you guys. Um, but yeah I think if we have a little look on the bench here there's really kind of straightforward um, thing that we're going to be doing. So I've got my pen blank here and um, I've already made a few marks on it. We've just drawn some little lines about two or three mil in from the edge. Um, and I want to repeat that all the way around. So the way I've done that is use a sharp pencil. I'm just going to kind of register back on that line there. And then on our unmarked surface, we're using our thumb, um, uh, sorry, finger, almost as like a little spacer to give us a line that just runs parallel to the edge and um, just a few mil in. And it's not critical how far this line is in. This is really just um, a little bit for when we cut it, we can kind of overshoot it, pass through the blank. So that's the pen we're going to make. Um, and like I say, a piece of lime. And I've got a very thin piece of veneer here. This is just a um, piece of grey. I think it's a, like a stained oak or an ash or something. It's got that open grain structure. But you can see the kind of results of the pen. And let's go step by step on how we make this. So, like I say, we've got our blank and we've started off with these lines just a few millimeters in from the edge. And that's on all four sides. Okay. Let's just get rid of those. Um, this is the pen that we're going to turn. But of course, you could do um, a two part pen. So you could divide this up into two parts if you wish. Um, I'm just going to go with um, this one we call the Venetian. So I'm looking at this to give me a guide as to how big our blank wants to be. And again, roughly, let's use my sharp pencil. So it kind of starts there and ends there. You could use your brass tubes that you get in the pack um, to, to measure these out. So, what's our distance there? So, we're about 57 mil between um, the two components on that pen. I'm just going to round that down to 55. Make two little marks there. Let me just see. So, we're 5 mil in from the end. So, we can transfer that 5 mil onto here. We've got our 55 down from there. What am I doing? So 55, sorry. I've marked on 50. Okay. Let's just rub that out in case it causes any confusion in a bit. And then I'm just going to use my little square. So this is a little engineer's square. And it's important that this blank is, is pretty square as well. And I'm just going to mark that lower line all the way around the blank. So turn it through 90 degrees. And then pop our pencil mark on there. We do that the same up at the top. And again, don't worry if you're a, a fraction of a mil out. It's not going to make much difference on the on the end. Um, 
you know, the end piece. So we've got our lines going right the way around. And now, really simply, again, we're just going to draw a diagonal. It doesn't really, again, it doesn't really matter which way you go. I'm going to go from um, top left as I'm looking at it to the bottom right. Okay. So we're drawing a diagonal line and we'll take that line right off the edge of the blank. Okay. So you can see it goes right off the edge there and right down past the kind of length of our uh, blank that we're going to end up with. So, same thing, turn it through 90 degrees. I like to pop my pencil on that top corner, swing the bottom until it's uh, lined up, and then just draw a nice clear line corner to corner. Next face. Pencil up on there. Let's find our bottom corner there, and a nice bold line running through. Um, important that all of these lines are facing the same way, so each time I'm going from top left to bottom right. But you could go um, the other way around. And there we go. You see how those angles are all the same, running right the way on all four faces there. So, next thing we need to cut this blank, okay? And it's really nice to have that extra bit that's kind of overshot because we can kind of jiggle it around on the scroll saw we're going to cut this on until we're, you know, happy that we're we're following this line and we'll follow this line right to this corner. Um and we need to do just one cut at a time because we need to glue this piece of veneer in next. Uh, once we've made that cut, we're going to glue this piece of veneer in and then we need to give it time to, to dry. So, we'll do our first cut on the scroll saw and then we're going to glue it in um, using something like an epoxy. You could use um, super glue. I just find epoxy is just a little bit cleaner. Um, and this is the five minute epoxy. So, it will have a, a faster set time if we want to get on and um, with the next section. So, goggles on. I've got my um, my scroll saw here, and we're just going to make that cut. I'm going to bring my stool in so we're nice and comfortable, and kind of looking over the top of the project. Um, this is a number seven blade in here, which is a little bit thicker than I usually go, um, but we want to just have that little bit of extra clearance so that the um, that that thin um, veneer is going to stick in the middle. So, set up to auto extraction on this scroll saw and I'm just trying to get aligned with where I think the blade's going to travel and just cutting in on that top corner going to bring in a little blower to clear that sight line um, as I work. I'm taking this nice and slow and I'm trying not to take any pauses. If we need to switch direction to do it very gradually and kind of drift back onto our line rather than um, a quick change in direction. So a nice gentle feed. Nice gentle feed onto the um, onto the cup. We've reached our bottom corner there, and I'm just going to take this just a little bit further 
And then you can either take the scroll, turn the scroll saw off. I'm just going to reverse back up that cut. So we've got a really simple cut, just in a fairly straight line, or as straight as we can manage. Um, but yeah, back to the bench. So I've got plenty of um, you know length in that in that ply there. What I'm going to do is just cut just over the thickness or the width of the blank. So I'm just going to score that with a pencil along there. Give me some sort of indication of where I need to cut. And we can cut this with a pair of scissors. It doesn't have to be uh, cut on the saw or anything. Now, in this cut, there'll be a little bit of residue, that dust <laughs> left from um, where we've cut it on the scroll saw. What I usually do is just try and just gently flex that out, flex it open, <laughs> and blow um, any dust. What we need to do is just make sure that this line here, that our, um, our bit of veneer is going to slot down below that line. So sometimes you might need to give it a bit of a bit of a wiggle. And it does sometimes struggle as we get to that little bottom bit. So again, just flexing it open, give it a little wiggle. And I'm happy now that that bit of veneer has gone down past this line. And, um, and when we glue it, um, it's going to you know, we're going to get all that information in in our blank. Okay? So, try not to open this too much. We don't want to snap that if we can uh, help it. But it is quite a weak, um, you know, there's hardly any material left there. So just sliding our little veneer back out. Um, I'm going to bring in just a bit of um, scrap ply. Let's pop these to one side a moment, um, a bit of scrap ply, and we're going to use this um, epoxy resin. Okay, so we have the resin and the hardener, um, equal parts of each. I go resin first, and we don't need loads, we're really just kind of covering our bit of uh, veneer. So equal amounts of each, and then just going to use like a little flat piece of timber, a little off cut, just to mix that in. That needs to be mixed really well. So give that a good mix. I usually um, sort of squish this whatever you're mixing it down back into the material and then give it one more little mix afterwards because sometimes you'll get the resin or the hardener kind of piled up on your mixing stick and then you haven't got a proper mix. Good. So a little bit of a little bit of veneer. I've cracked that but I think we're just gonna go with it anyway. No let's let's cut a fresh one. It's just cracked along the um, along the grain. So just cutting a fresh little piece of this veneer. I've got plenty of it, so that's not a problem. And then we're going to spread our five minute epoxy on top of that. And like I say, we don't need loads of this, just enough to cover it. Gonna 
scoop some of the excess off of this side. That's better. And we're just trying to get a good coverage. We want it so that that material changes color. I've been a bit stingy with my mix, to be honest. I would like a little bit more than this, but we'll do that on the next one. And I usually leave myself a little bit extra on the top just to keep hold of. And then any of those last little bits, I'm just going to pop on that end so that we've got a good seal right down the bottom. Yeah, a little bit stingy on that glue. I'd have liked just to touch more than that. So I'm going to um, bring this in. We're going to slide it down that little hole. Try and keep this sort of mouth open a little bit as we go. Sorry, I'm losing your camera. Try and keep this open a little bit so we don't kind of squeegee all the glue off right up at the top. And that's just going to slide in there right down to the bottom and give it a little wiggle side to side. Um, so that we come right down to the bottom here again. Okay. And then, um, promising, I'm giving it a little squeeze and I can see a little excess of glue, a little bit of squeeze out from there. Um, so I think that's going to hold really nicely. Then it's really just a couple of spring clamps. These are really useful. A couple of little spring clamps to hold this together. Okay, and in a moment we'll come back, we'll trim off all this um, excess. So anything kind of holding on around the side there, we're going to trim off that excess, um, turn it through 90 degrees, and then do the same thing, cut and stick in a slice of our um, ply. So give that some time to go off and we'll be back soon. Okay, so due to a slight technical hitch, we've um, had to swap the blank over. Um, we we missed out on cutting the doing the second cut. But what I wanted to show you, I've numbered the sides on this one. Um, this is the where we left off. We did our first cut and just inserted this um, piece of veneer and glued it in. Um, when we do our second cut, it's going to be on the opposite face. So. If you can imagine there, one, two, three, four, um, we're going to go on the opposite face to what we've just cut. That's going to create that cross shape. So let's just trim this one back. So just using um, my knife, but you could, of course, sand this. And remember, this face is going to be flat down on the scroll saw, so we need to get this nice and flat. So that it doesn't rock on the table. So I'm just running my th thumb or finger over this. It's going to be nice and flat on the um, on the scroll saw table. Just a little bit there. And just a little bit in the middle. There. 
there we go no rock nice and stable um, on the table <laughs> so over to the scroll saw um, we're going to cut this face now so the one opposite the first one that we cut coming in at this top angle here and following that line as best we can This blank's a little bit shorter than the other one, so I'm just going to switch my grips here. So I'm holding the back of the blank and then pushing forward down on this other thumb, which is clear of the path of the blade. And remember, we're just going to slightly overshoot um, this bottom line, and I like to just run the blade back through the cut and that should shift any waste. And we're going back with our epoxy, starting with the hardener. Sorry, starting with the resin, then there's the hardener. Equal parts of each. And we'll give this a good mix. Always squidge what's on your spatula or your mixing stick back into the mix. And then we want our bit of veneer. So just going slightly wider than the uh, blank. and then cut that with my scissors. A good generous coat of this um, epoxy resin. So just trying to spread that out a little bit thinner. Just scoop some off the back there. I like to put just a little pool of it at the bottom. So, just like the other one, we're going to just tease that open slightly. And we're going to slide that veneer right the way to the bottom. And I think you can see on there, it just overshoots this bottom line, which is what we want. Just eyeing it up side to side, make sure that it comes out of the blank on both sides. And then that's another clip. These little spring clamps, great job of just holding this together. Okay, so 
That's stage two. Remember, really important to do the opposite side of your first cut on your um, on the second stage. We're just going to leave that there to dry. Okay, so we have cut and glued um, two of these faces now, and we've done it on opposite sides. So this was the original side where we've um, glued in our piece of veneer. Um, and then we turned it over through 180 degrees and then we cut this um, opposite face. We're going to do the same now with these last two um, but we need to trim this excess off so that it's going to sit nicely on the scroll saw. Um, you could use a sander, um, you could use your belt and disc sander to make it a quick job. Um, I'm just going to quickly use my um, little sloid knife, little carving knife and just whip off the kind of excess of the glue and also that veneer. Just being careful how I use this, using the back of the knife as kind of leverage and just pushing that knife through that glue layer. Bit of a squeaky sound we're getting off this. And that's what we want. I was a bit stingy on the first one but we want that extra glue um, just to really kind of fill any gaps that we may have or um, you know and give us that really good bond. So I'm taking that right back down to the um, to the blank to that timber layer and then just running my thumb over it make sure there's no high spots. Uh, same the other side And of course it doesn't matter what's on this face, if there is a little bit of glue, we are going to turn this eventually and um, all of that will be uh, removed in the turning process. Um, across the end grain here, just get rid of the worst of it. Um, that doesn't need to completely come off because it's as long as it sits flat on the scroll saw in a moment, we're all good. So putting my knife back in its little um, holder to one side. Okay, next job we're going to cut um, one of these faces. Again, it doesn't matter which side you start with, um, but we're going to cut one, um, glue our piece of material in, and then when we're, that one's dried, we're going to cut the opposite face. And we find that way we get a bit more central um, rather than doing it one here, one there, one there, and then one there. If you work on opposite faces, it tends to be a little bit neater and a little bit tidier. So, goggles on. We're going to make that next cut on the scroll saw. Again, trying to just align that line roughly, we might need to tweak it a little as we go. So we're just heading past that little line um, that we marked up on the edge and just past our blank. We can backtrack up and actually that's going to remove some of the dust that may be trapped in there. So if you backtrack up through the blade with the machine running, um, that should get rid of the majority of that. But I like to just flex it open and just get rid of the worst of any dust that may be sat in there. But we've got our next little cut done. So goggles can come off. We're back on the bench. Um, 
again I like to just test I know it's gonna fit but quite often you can clear any of the sort of last bits of waste um, any of that wood dust just by pushing this in and f in and out and it's either going to compact it at the bottom where we overshot our cut or just kind of push it out the sides but we know that that's going to go in there <laughs> just getting rid of any last bits of dust and then we're back to our um, our glue our two-part epoxy going to start with the resin and we've got our nice little patch here now so the actual bit of ply won't absorb any of this glue which I think it did on the first um, on our first little mix so equal parts of each um, resin and hardener and this is the five minute epoxy giving it a good mix try and get rid of some of the stuff on your mixing stick because you know it can pull just the resin or the hardener and we want that really well mixed so give it a little squidge here and there to take off the glue on the mixer okay so we've got our little bit of um, veneer and you can get all sorts of colors um, with these veneers I bought a mix pack and it had a nice blue in um, but I've run out of the blue now so we're we're doing um, this kind of dark grey which is nice it's going to offer a nice contrast to the timber and that's what I would recommend that you go for something a completely different colour um, to the blank that you're um, gluing into so the change of colour tells me that we're completely covered on this side. We'll scrape off some of the excess and pop it on this side. Always leave myself a little bit at the top, something to hold on to, so you're not getting uh, mucky hands. And like I say, don't be too stingy with the glue. We want a good coverage of that to kind of improve the bond that we get on the inside. Okay, so quite a thick glue or resin, I should say. Looks good, and then any excess I like to scoop up and just pile it on the end there because as you slide this into the blank, sometimes that bottom bit of glue kind of gets pushed up. So having that little bit extra on the end um, it's going to help so just opening it up kind of like a little bird mouth we're going to slide that in so I'm getting the shakes and just push it home till it won't go any further and then back on with the spring clamps you see I've not got as much this side so I'm just going to slide that over looks good back on with our spring clamps and then again we're gonna wait half an hour for that to go off um, and if you're getting into doing these I recommend that you know if you've got another one on the go you can start your cut on the next one and then by the time you've kind of gone through three or four it'll be time to get back to um, the original so we're just gonna leave that there to dry We've got one more cut and um, one more piece of veneer to glue, and then we're pretty much done. We can um, we can then prep this for the turning. So we're going to do a bit of drilling, and um, and pop it on the pen mandrel to turn. So we'll see you in a bit. So we've got another exciting instalment of um, gluing a little bit of veneer inside this blank. So this is the last one now. We've done these faces. We've got one diagonal across there. And remember, we marked with a pencil from corner to corner. If we flip it through 80 uh, 180 degrees, you can see the pencil mark that we've got left to cut. Okay, so again, trimming off the excess. I'm going to use my little Sloyd knife. 
just freeze really but you could sand this and um, just don't sand off that line there extra bit of glue on this one I'll give my little knife a hone make sure that gunks off it afterwards but just taking that right back down to the blank again doesn't really matter if we take a chunk out like I have here this is all going to be turned off um, a bit later on in the video so this line we've got to cut we need to make sure that this bottom face is nice and flush because otherwise it rolls around on the um, the table or the bed of the um, scroll saw So just one thumb on the back of the knife here or two thumbs together like this and you can create that little lever effect to drive the knife through that material. Again, rub my thumb over the back, make sure there's nothing kind of protruding out too far and then we can cut across this end grain on our piece of veneer and just get rid of that. So we're cutting this face, just on the bench I'm going to give it a little wiggle, make sure it's not rocking, feels pretty good, might just trim off that little bit there, feel like it's just lifting on that edge, but nice and solid on the table means it's going to be nice and solid uh, when we cut it on the scroll saw. So last cut on the scroll saw, let's do it, I'm going to put my piece there, goggles on, always goggles when you're using the scroll saw. We are hooked up to our auto extractor, iron up that line and away we go. Taking this cut nice and slowly, we don't want to force this through. We're just taking our time and following that line as best we can. Again, we'll just cut just past that corner. But not all the way. Dragging the blade back up through, that should get rid of some of that extra waste or the dust that we create when we're cutting it. Give it a little tap, open it up. And just clearing that waste out. So there's our blank, the last cut we've done. Going to just pop my knife away, get that well out of the way. And we need to do one last little uh, bit of gluing up. So we want the resin first. And by the fourth one, we kind of got a good idea of how much resin a need now. Um, again we want to give that a good mix. Really important that you get that mixed well, that there's not little pockets of hardener or pockets of the just the resin, because um, then it just won't bond properly. So giving that a good mix up always squidge your mixing stick back into the mixture and then give that another little mix. The last little bit of veneer 
Again, using a contrasting color to the, uh, the blank that we're going to use, just so it stands out nicely on the, uh, the finished piece. Observing that color change so that we know we've got good coverage with this glue and resin. And just flipping it over, always leave myself a little spot at the top just to hold it. So I've cut this just, you know, a little bit over length so that we're not getting gluey fingers all the time. Just smearing that all the way along. Really important we don't miss a spot. You may have to go back to the other side and scrape some of this off. Some of the excess, so I've got a bit more glue there. Again, just bring it right down to the end and I like to put an extra little splodge on the end of the bit of veneer. Okay, and again, just opening up this little cut that we've made and just sliding that down in. Always makes my hands shake for some reason, just holding it in a funny way. Good, give it a little wiggle around, try and get that glue to kind of get all inside that blank. And that is pretty much it for the gluey. These little clamps, it's surprising how much um, kind of force they put on the blank, but they're really strong little spring clamps. Um, that's just going to hold that together uh, whilst it dries, and then you can pop them back off. Um, so, a couple of little jobs once this is dry, we need to just trim it up. We can cut the blank off then. Um, we're going to drill it, glue the tube in, and then just a quick bit of turning, and um, hopefully we'll show you some good results on this Celtic Knot pen blank. Okay, so we've cut these to length. These are just over the length of our um, our barrels, our pen tubes that come in the in the kit with the pen. Um, so we've got a couple of blanks here that've been working on, and a couple of tubes. And we're going to use the same five-minute epoxy that we did to um, that we used to glue the actual blank together. So. You'll be used to this by now. Equal portions of each. Again, we want to be generous with this glue. So I'm giving this a good thorough mixing. And resonant hardener. So just applying that glue in a good dollop on the top so we've got a nice thick amount um, 
on the on the pen there. Okay, being careful not to get too much in that end. Doesn't matter if we do, but we're just going to slide that into our pen blank. Allow it to create a little reservoir on top, so we've got like a little puddle. And as we twist the tube in, that's going to coat as we go along. Some people like to um, use an abrasive on this, almost like keying it up like you would with uh, painting. Um, but I find this glue is really good. Use my next tube to scoop off the excess and then we'll pop that to one side to dry. A bit more glue on there. Again, nice and generous with our glue. So kind of rotating it, pulling it back just a touch every now and then. That's going to spread the glue on the inside. And then this last little bit, we're just going to scoop the excess off and then just push that down almost flush just beneath the surface of our um, our blank. Again trying to scrape off any of that excess glue um, just to help with trimming in a bit and being careful not to get too much glue down in the tube or the barrel. So like I say give that a little bit of time to dry we need to trim them and then just the turning to do. So we've done all of our um, drilling and gluing. I've got my little blank here ready for turning. Um, the only thing that I've done extra was to um, just to trim the, the ends here. And I've used a barrel trimmer, the universal barrel trimmer. Um, and top tip for that one, if, you, if this shaft here is not quite big enough, which it wasn't for this one, it's rattling around, um, just a little bit of, I put a little bit of electrical tape on there and that just helps keep things nice and straight and um, keep that face at 90 degrees to our, um, our little tube inside. Okay, so after gluing we always trim our pens um, and that's so that these bushings can sit nice and close up to the, um, up to the face here and here. And remember, each bushing set is separate for um, you know for different pen kits. Um, they are all different sizes. Um, just slipping this over the pen mandrel. This is the two Morse taper compression mandrel, um, and that works by just bringing the tailstock up. It's got a live centre in the tailstock, then we can lock the tailstock off and just add a little bit of pressure from the um, from just advancing the the tailstock in. Just quickly checking that I'm swinging the blank and that the spindle's turning with it. Okay, we know we've got a good grip then. Um, and then it's just a case of turning it. So I'm just going to use a roughing gouge on mine. Um, use your um, chisel of choice, gouge of choice. Mine is the roughing gouge on these pens. Bringing the tool rest in nice and close. And I've got a shortened tool rest. This is a kind of six inch version of the Robust. Really nice having this nice bar. Just checking where we are on centre. Just going to drop that down a touch because we're working just below centre uh, with our roughing gouge. So, going to turn the lathe on, lathe speed down, going to hit the green button and then we can just turn this on. And resting on the tool rest, I'm going to bring the speed up to around just over the 2000 mark. I'm 2200 there. Like I say, rough and gouge on the tool rest, and we're just going to start to take off those corners just by bringing this back and forth. And I quite like stopping the lathe with this one as the. Um, the kind of pattern emerges. We'll have a little peek halfway through. So 
So just bringing it down to a cylinder. And I'm just sliding back and forth on the tool rest using my thumb to kind of push it along. And let's have a little peek, see what that pattern's doing. See, that looks really cool just as is. Um, but you can start to see this kind of circle emerge as we um, kind of come through these layers. But yeah, looking good. And there's no kind of glue residue or anything like that. We've clamped it up tight, get all that squeeze out. And we've got a really nice looking blank already. <coughs> As we take more off, that knot will become tighter into the middle of the project. But this is no different from turning any other blank, just treat it as you would any pen blank. So taking a bit more off, just going to have another little peek, just for fun really. See how it's looking, making sure those circles are sort of keeping a, um, a similar size. Looks like this one's just a little bit higher on that edge, but that's okay. So you can see how quick and easy you can turn these pens using quite a heavy cut there but I am controlling it by using that bevel rubbing um, so touching on with the bevel I'm holding this um, this gouge right up on the steel here um, so bevel rubbing lifting the handle till we got our cut and there you go Now we're nearly down to our blanks. We're going to have, uh, sorry, nearly down to our bushings. Going to have one last peek. I'm happy with that. It's looking really nice. Um, if you didn't want these to go any smaller, try and keep that shape and just round these ends in. Um, if you kind of get to your set size that you wanted it to be, I'm going to take it um, round to the bushings, but just have a slight belly on it. Okay. Just going to readjust the tool rest, so let's turn the lathe off. We're going to creep in a bit closer. I felt like I was lifting my handle a bit too much with the uh, roughing gouge there. So bevel rubbing, bringing the handle up, and then we've got a nice uh, finish to the cut. And I can feel it underneath when it's nice and smooth. So just bringing this material down to its bushings and just trying to keep a slight curve to the to the pen. Taking really small cuts, you can see the shavings change to almost dust. And at that point, I think it's a good idea just to bring the extractor in. And we'll do those little finishing cuts and, um, and we'll sand it. Brought the extractor nozzle in nice and close. Those cuts were starting to get a little bit dusty. Um, so I'm going to bring that in whilst we um, do these little finishing cuts and, um, and sand the piece. So on with the extractor. Sorry, I forgot to plug it in. <laughs> okay. So, our little finishing cuts, our little dusty ones, just taking off a tiny amount of material. Sometimes you'll find where these, um, this, veneer is kind of coming out and it's got that glue it's kind of embedded with glue um, that might offer a little 
resistance change. So you'll kind of just have to steady the gouge and just work through that. Um, but try not to allow it to kind of dip either side of the uh, of the pattern. So just feeling here where I am on those bushings. It was pretty good to be fair. Just going to do a last little tickle. Make sure everything's nicely blended in. Just softening that little change in the angle. And just working on those little bits we said. Cool. So as you see that lovely pattern's come through. Um, we've got maybe one or two of these little circles are slightly different sizes, but I think it still looks really nice. Um, and that's probably just where I've drilled ever so slightly off centre. Um, and that will, you know, th throw the, that, um, that centre tube off and, um, you know, there'll be more material on one side than there is on the other, giving you um, a difference in sizes. Okay, a little bit of abrasive. So, I've got a um, 240, 400 and a 600. I've cut this nice and smooth otherwise you know if you still see those tooling marks on there um, you might need to go a little bit rougher with the abrasive and usually I would double up my abrasive to give me a bit more kind of um, padding but I'm keeping it flat so I don't want um, any heat to build up in this pen blank sanding onto the bushings rather than dragging any metal dust into the open pores of the wood there and just keeping the abrasive moving and if you feel you may have picked up some dust just move on to another bit of the abrasive get that nice and smooth going to bring the speed down slightly. Um, I like to have a quick peek in between abrasives and that's really nice, that's come up really nice. Chuffed with that. Uh, 400. And we don't need to spend too long with this, we're just taking out those um, scratch lines left by the 240 which aren't very apparent at all anyway so that's the 400 and now finish off on the 600 and then we're going to chuck a bit of um, friction polish on this So, a bit of uh, chestnut friction polish, love this stuff, use it on pretty much all my pens. And we need a little bit of blue rag. We can knock the extractor off now because we're not doing anything dusty. And what I like to do with this one is just create a little kind of uh, folded up pad with our blue roll. And then we're going to give the friction polish a little shake just get any of that kind of sediment that would sit at the bottom of the bottle just trying to get that up in the, into the liquid lid off and then we're going to completely cover the nozzle all right or the the, <laughs> the mouth of the bottle I guess I'm going to tip it over once um, shift the paper a little bit and then tip it over again 
Um, try and keep that seal around the top, otherwise it all goes on your shoes and the, it's a real pain to get out. So that's what we want. Enough on there to not be completely absorbed by the, the, um, the paper towel. So to apply this, I'm just going to push that on there and I'm going to use a bit of pressure on this um, paper towel and kind of pinch the workpiece uh, through it. You will see it kind of change in colour as that, um, you know, that wet material goes on there. And what I'm looking for is um, when, as you're polishing, you get a band of light, so it's reflecting off the ceiling lights, and you want that to kind of come into focus, so you get a nice kind of bright um, reflection off of it. That's when you know you've got a good polish on there. This is generating a bit of heat. I can feel it just through the cloth. Um, and if this ever sticks and wraps around, just let go of it. Don't be tempted to, to, um, to hold on. So I've just moved to a clean bit of the paper towel and just buffing off any kind of residue that's on there. Let's get rid of that. Go. There is our Celtic knot pen blank. Looking great. Let's pop the pen together quickly. Um, if you wanted a more in-depth look at um, how to prepare the pens and, and things like that, we've got lots of pen videos on. The um, the blank itself is the kind of star of the show on this one. So, I'm going to get my little table here. Let's pop that blank, put the bushing somewhere nice and safe. We'll pop them on the bench here. Okay, so we've got our blank. It doesn't really matter which end we're going to put things in, but I always start with the end cap and clip. So we've got this part here. This is your end cap and the clip, the bit that sits over your pocket or um, you know, marks the page in your book or whatever. Okay, so this one, little spring-loaded um, pen press. We're going to come back a little bit on there. Let's open this up. And you can see um, it's just kicked off at a slight angle. So I'm just going to push that in. Might just need another one of those little um, fingers up. Sorry, I'm struggling for space here. There we go. So I'm putting a bit of pressure to stop this from jackknifing. We don't want to become a cropper now that we've done all the hard work. It's really pushing off this one. It should. Just go in there nicely now. That's it. It's gone all the way home. And I've just closed that little gap um, just there. We've Because we've um, turned down to our bushings, we've got a nice flow from the from the blank into the um, components there and you could align this you could swing that around um, but you want that in really nice and tight you don't want this clip to be rotating around and scratching all of your lovely blank you spent all that time on next bit really easy this just pushes together now so we're going to take this part out and if you do use these Venetian pens I like to um, just tighten this brass bit so I'm holding on to the kind of threaded end and then the brass bit there as well and just make sure that that's nice and tight okay we can work the twist mechanism a little bit loosen all that up because these are shipped around the world um, and sometimes those shipping containers can get hot and cold and then things expand and contract sometimes it can loosen the threaded section here. 
So just make sure that's nipped up. So we've got our refill. We're going to just slide the spring over that. That's going up into the nib end of the pen. Okay. And then our twist mechanism is just going to slide over the back of that one. It should seat in there like that. Screw that one together. And then work that twist mechanism again and you should see the nib coming in and out. Okay. And then that just slides on. And there we go. That is our Celtic knot pen. Um, and you could, when we did our first stages where we cut the blank, you could introduce another little cut parallel to this one. So you've got almost a double knot. Um, I've seen these with zigzags running through them. So you get lots of little knots. But there's the basics of what, we're, um, what we've done today. Um, really nice, attractive little pen. Um, just a bit of ply, uh, sorry, a, a bit of veneer, um, the scroll saw. Um, you could use something like a Japanese saw. The important thing is that this clean, this cut is very clean. That we're um, sometimes a band saw tooth setting would be a little bit rough, and you'll get little um, kind of uh, chatter marks or little kind of scratches on the inside of the cut. Something like a scroll saw, Japanese pool saw. Um, it's just going to be slightly cleaner give those two surfaces um, you know a really good bond but very pleased with that nice little looking pen and of course you could do this as a two-part pen so you could do the um, the lid and the main body um, but a bit of food for thought have a go and um, and you know start it will start to expand the kind of looks of your pens I see lots of stools with pens on them um, and quite often these ones that have just got a little bit of something different going on, they're the ones that people, you know, really, really go for. But that's about it for today. Um, thanks again for joining us on our Woodworking Wisdom here at Axminster Tools. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this, um, to, to share. And um, we'll see you again soon for more Woodworking Wisdom.